Welcome to Theological Grazing. Well, we're deep into the narcissism rabbit hole now, and I'm not stopping. Uh, there is there is so much more on my mind in this regard. Well, I, I've talked about Till We Have Faces, a book that I think really well portrays narcissism. And now I want to talk about Fyodor Dostoevsky's book, Notes from the Underground. And this book, I've, I've read it once and I'm in the midst, I'm nearly done right now listening to uh, the audio book of it. I actually only stopped listening to the audio book so that I could record some of these podcasts on a long car ride. But I I found this book after listening to a podcast, um, the Martyr Made podcast with Daryl Cooper. And Daryl Cooper has an episode of the podcast that is called The Underground Spirit. And I highly recommend it. Um, several people have told me it's it's not as good as I thought it was, but I think it is perhaps the most profound and most interesting podcast I've ever listened to in my life. And I listen to a lot of podcasts. And so I, I highly recommend it, um, would, would recommend it to just about anybody. It is dark at times, um, and that, you know, Daryl Cooper is not a, he's not a Christian or he, he might be a, you know, a Christian of, in some capacity, but... Uh, is maybe not a you know conservative Christian in as far as the kinds of language that he uses or the things he feels free talking about. So um, just be aware that there is some material in there that's probably not great for kids. Uh, but I highly recommend this, um, the Underground Spirit. And what Daryl Cooper does, and I've talked about this already, but in case you didn't hear that, uh, he traces the lives of Fyodor Dostoevsky and Friedrich Nietzsche and how they interrelate, how similar they were, and yet how differently they ended up. And really the difference was that they were both narcissists, but one of them took that as a virtue. This is Nietzsche. He took this as a virtue, and in the end it drove him mad. And one of them, in Dostoevsky, took the road of repentance and the hard road of of actually looking at himself with true eyes, you know, looking at himself in truth and seeing how absolutely ugly and wicked he was. He looked at his sin and all of its just grossness. And that was the start to his true repentance. That's, that is the start to repentance when you have to, you have to recognize your sinfulness and depravity and your need for help. So Notes from the Underground was Dostoevsky's, Dostoevsky's book. And I, I might I might be a little bit wrong about these details, but this is my understanding, uh, is that Notes from the Underground was written around the time that Dostoevsky was 40 years old and he had been an extreme narcissist all of his life. And this was a book that he wrote when he was starting to come out of that. And it's notes from the underground because he's, in a sense, coming out from the underground, from within himself. He's no longer completely self-consumed. Now, his life didn't turn around in an instant, but this was one of the first steps uh, to where he became actually a, you know, a, a well-known Christian man. He, in the end, did repent and, and professed faith, entered in the, into the church, became just a, a you know, a, a well-known figure in the Russian Orthodox Church and in Russia itself. But it did not start that way. And he had to come to grips with how radically self-centered he was. Now this book, Like Till We Have Faces, is written in the first person. And I think that a book written in the first person is maybe the most helpful when it comes to dealing with narcissism. 
because it gets you into the mind. And, and if you're anything like me anyway, when you read a book, I, you know, I get really into the books that I'm reading usually, especially if they're good, if they're well written. And I, I find myself very easily kind of transported into the, the world and into the characters that are being written about. And especially in a first person, all of a sudden, you know, it's, you become this person, right? You're reading this and it's like you are them. And it starts off as just notes from this man kind of introducing the fact that he's coming out from the underground and, and, uh, then it, you know, in the, in the first half of the story, it's, it's just these reasons for why basically he's writing this in the first place and why he's going to try to be completely honest and not cover anything up. And even when he's not honest, he then, you know, explains, uh, that he wasn't being honest and here, you know, he didn't actually mean anything he said. And so he tries to be as honest as possible. And then in the second half, you get this, this story of this man and the things that he did that broke him down to the point where he began to come out from the underground. And this was, it's not exactly the story of Dostoevsky's life, but it's very close. And it's clearly a personal confession. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's in, it's in the story format of coming from someone else. But in the story portion, you get two kind of primary sets of experiences that this man has. One is, I guess it's not true, three. I would say three. Um, one is this experience of, of being a quiet and kind of the, the kind of person that keeps to themselves, lives all alone, uh, keeps to themselves at work and really doesn't really talk to anybody, doesn't really have any friends and is just completely insular and is constantly judging everybody else whom he thinks is constantly judging him and thinking about him and laughing at him. You get the sense right away that this is a, you know, a hyper paranoid guy and that he keeps saying these nasty things about all those he works with and you notice that it's really got to be true of him. And he, you know, he walks past this guard on the street and all of a sudden this, you know, there's this guard who, uh, you know, he has this desire that maybe this guard would, would throw him out a window like he saw happen to another man once because then, then it would, you know, it, it's kind of like he's not living real life, but that would be something real, something big that would happen to him. He would all of a sudden in his own mind be important because, uh, this could happen. Um, but basically you find that between this and another man, he's, nobody pays attention to him. And this really is deflating to his massive self-conception of his, you know, prowess and, and intellect and humor and personality that nobody really seems to care about him. And so he has these grand fantasies of what he's going to do and how he's going to, you know, change things. There's this, you know, guard that he walks past who will never move out of the way when he's walking down the street past him and and so finally he comes up with this idea that, you know, he's going to wear nice clothes and he's going to walk toward this man and he's not going to move. And so this man will have to move out of the way for him. And this is like a huge triumph for him when he's able to kind of do this. And then there's a story between him and he meets some of these old school friends that he's not kept up with that he hates and that he says hates him. And yet he has to go and be at this party with them and, and he treats them horribly. And you get you know, you get it all from his perspective, but from his perspective, they all treat him with contempt and with dishonor and they all treat him horribly. But you really get the feeling that, you know, that's kind of true. They don't like him because he's a horrible guy to them. He's, he's horribly mean and cruel to them, but, but he's actually the problem and it's not them. And then it, the final story is he meets a prostitute and then kind of takes out his rage on her in some ways, uh, mocking her, belittling her, but then in a sense trying to make it seem like, you know, he could be her salvation if she were to leave the brothel and, and you know, he could care for her. He makes it seem like he's a great, a, you know, a great man who's wealthy and, and who has so much going for him and none of this is true. And then she does end up leaving the brothel to try to come and find him and, 
and finds out that he lives in squalor and he is a horrible man and he absolutely humiliates her but you get this sense in you know in this final story and I'm probably ruining it by the way I'm sorry I didn't put a spoiler alert on here but if you haven't read it and you want to read it um, you might want to just go read that first instead and like I said maybe I'm not describing it the best I could Um, part of that is I'm you know this is unprepared I'm just doing this off the top of my head but he he humiliates this woman but you get the sense that this could have been the one chance for him to find a kind of salvation from his narcissism is there's these glimpses of where he could love this woman and he could come out of himself and he could humble himself before this woman but in the end he sees himself as so far above her and he's not despite her being a prostitute she is so much his superior but he thinks so highly of himself and he he cannot humble himself that in the end he has to humiliate her and he loses her and it just ends in kind of this horrible dark place where he is left all alone again but then he turns it all and he makes it he makes you realize that you know if you've been reading this and I think if you read it you will find many portions even if you've never done anything so extreme you will hear things that he says and ways that he thinks others think of him and and the way that he speaks of others and how it so obviously is really his problem not their problem I think you will read this and you will find many examples or should find many examples where it just sounds like something you've done or you've said or you've thought in your head or you've written in a journal about other people and in the end he turns it and the you know writer the fictional writer of this which is really you know clearly Dostoevsky himself turns it on the reader and says you know it's easy to think about this as being someone else as being this man this horrible man but we're all this way we are all narcissists we all act this way maybe not to such a hyperbolized form but we all do it and if you're willing to humble yourself and really look in the mirror so to speak and there's a moment by the way in this book where this man looks in the mirror he sees himself in the mirror and he sees just the the dirtiness he sees that he is just a mess and really that's what this book is about I think it's it's supposed to be like a mirror for you to look into to recognize that you're this way you're a narcissist and especially today as I've been saying over and over we are all narcissists we are all in need of humbling and of recognizing that we are not the center of all things of everybody's lives and and we are not the victim of the cruelty of other people as much as we are the perpetrators of cruelty toward others and we are not hated by other people as much as we are hateful toward other people and we are not just the object of humiliation as much as we humiliate others and we use the sense of pride that we have the the sense that we are actually the ones who have been wronged and and we use this to justify our sin so I recommend highly recommend reading this if you've got the time it's actually a pretty short book Um, on audio it's only like four hours maybe uh, maybe a little bit over and if you're reading it you can probably read it faster depending on how fast you read but it is it's a striking work that I think holds a mirror up to each one of us and in just to our modern society and I think will help recognize that what I've been talking about this narcissism it's it's in each of us it's all over the place so I'll probably keep talking more about this but Maybe I'll stop talking about narcissism now or move on to a different subject. But I really think that this is 
of central importance that you understand this reality, this problem that we all have, and it's us. We are the problem. Well, that's all, folks. If you can help me out, rate and review this podcast, share it with a friend, go ahead and email me if you have any questions. We're out.